Um, welcome to session number three, guys. So today we're going to be talking about just sleep and recovery and just touching base on all of these protocols. So it's a couple questions of what, you need, what do you need to know so far? Um, Self-evaluation time. So I wanted to write it down or ask yourself a couple questions. So how many hours of sleep do you think is normal versus how many hours do you get a night? So I wanted to compare the pair. Um, and also, what are some recovery methods do you like to do and what you like to do? Um, we discussed this in session one, so I just wanted to reiterate and just recover about what you guys are currently doing at the moment. So these are the topics we're going to be going over today. So what is sleep? Sleep and the effects on performance. The effect of sleep, how to set up a routine, and also just reiterating on recovery protocols. Um, so a little quote I always like to throw in, so sleep is one of the best um, performance enhancements. So discussing on sleep and the effects of performance. So sleep is defined as a state of reduced awareness and the responsiveness in humans and nurses associated with the reduced movements. Um, we've got two phases of sleep. So we've got the rapid eye movement, which is what we call REM sleep, um, and the non-REM sleep or a slow wave sleep. So just giving you a little background about the sleep, sleep history and what actually sleep is apart from just shutting your eyes and going straight to bed. So REM sleep is characterized by the presence of the rapid eye movement um, during sleep and is less restful and associated with dreaming and also bodily mu muscle movements. Um, during REM sleep, the heart rate and the breathing becomes irregular. The brain becomes extremely active. So this is when you have your vivid dreams, nightmares. They, these are what consider coming involved. Compared to that, non-REM sleep is our deep sleep phase. Um, the blood pressure, breathing, and metabolic rate are all depressed significantly. Body movements do not occur during this non-REM sleep. So this is when you're in that massive deep sleep cycle, and it's hard to kind of wake up and also get back going into it. Um, lastly is the non-REM sleep is something referred to as dreamless sleep. Um, dreams and, and even nightmares can occur during the non-REM phase of the sleep. Cool. So pretty much with sleep, so the essential component of your health and well-being um, with the significant impacts on physical development, emotional regulation, cognitive and physical performance, um, muscle building and fat loss. So these are super important. We do need to be getting enough sleep because it's going to, again, reiterate, affects your performance, mental health and also your physical health and well-being. Um, so better sleep reduces the risk of both injuries and illnesses by enhancing performance throughout increased participation in training. Um, American studies have done this, so adults required roughly need is about seven to nine, um, adolescents about eight to ten. Um, the amount of sleep vary between individuals may differ, so from day to day since everyone's lifestyle, energy, work um, and what they do outside also do come into base. So the number of factors including illnesses, sleep and sleep depth may be physiological or psychological to the stress too. So how this affects performance. So just throwing a little bit of data and studies I've done while doing a little bit of research on the sleep. So a single night of sleep of five hours, a tennis player was associated with a decrease in serving accuracy up to about 53% compared to after a normal hours of night sleep. So this is kind of just stating the fact that the study was done in 20, 20, 2017 from memory. Um, they had done a studies over an American block. So there were American students doing that. Um, and then they were just testing with the tennis and seeing how that was reacting. Um, and over time, again, a 50% comparison, which is quite a big deal if it's a massive tournament for an athlete. athlete. Um, sleep loss um, has been found to have a negative effect on the numbers of measured of subjective well-being, including fatigue, mood, soreness, depression, and confusion. So these are all things that can affect you mentally before actually going into that competition or actual training session. Together, these studies suggest that sleep deprivation and also sleep restrictions are associated with impaired in the reaction time and accuracy. So how this affects performance. So this is pretty much in a graph format so you guys can visually see because I like to be very visual and explain things. So as you can see from it goes five, six, seven, eight to nine hours of sleep and these are how much of injuries you're more likely to do. So obviously as mentioned, the more hours of sleep you get, the less injured and the less likely you guys be. Um, the more less hours you do have under seven hours, you're at a 1.7 chance in a thousand to get injured. Um, so this is just kind of reiterating the facts. So in five hours, you got about 60%. Six hours, you got 70%. Seven, 62. In eight, you got 35. And in nine, you got 18. But again, optimal depends on every individual and what they do as well. And also how you guys set yourself up for the best sleep routine. 
So what affects the ability to sleep? So there's a multiple reason of how this can actually affect you. Um, the general most easiest one is irregular sleep cycles, so not having a decent routine. Number two, sleep environment. So a dark, quiet room, um, or if you're having a bright light, that will affect your sleep. Um, number three, you got caffeine and alcohol. I'm probably the worst person to talk about this with caffeine. Um, but again, try and make sure you have at least two cups of coffee a day. We'll go into more details about this in the next couple slides. Um, psychological effects, so if you are having like, there is some depression disorders, um, if you are having like just a bad day or just mentally they're not with it, those are those factors that do come like tie in because you're always constantly thinking and overthinking in that stress of fight or flight mode, I like to say. And also medications do come into uh, play as well. So depending on what you are, again, if you're on like a depression, um, antidepressant, that can also affect your sleep um, or anything else if you're sick or illnesses and stuff like that. Um, for me, yes. Uh, <laughs> no, um, ideally it's the average consumption of an actual human being. So it's two, it's two minimum, yeah. That's the average? Yeah. Um, obviously, caffeine addict over here. I generally have more than that and I'm completely fine, but everyone's got their different tolerance, so it depends on each individual. So what affects the ability to sleep? So studies have demonstrated that the increased levels of stress and anxiety around competition impaired sleep quality and the duration. With a recent review reporting the prevalence and the pre-competition um, is somnia. So this is when you're like having struggle sleeping or not sleeping at all, um, but has uh, symptoms between 37 and 78% in elite athletes. So when you think about it, put in perspective, if you've got like the Olympic games coming up, a lot of these athletes over here have been having insomnia um, symptoms due to not having a good routine or actually not actually seeking help or actually having a decent understanding of education behind this. Um, the greatest risk of injury resulted when training loads increases and sleep duration decreases. Um, so you generally see this on comp, um, comp travels or training camps that generally they get done in about a week. So everyone's all together, there's always lack of sleeps, everyone's super excited to just to be with their old teammates and this is when also injuries do come up because they're not feeling properly and also lack of sleep. Um, so how to set up for a routine. So what we want to be doing is refueling and rehydrating. So post-session, make sure you are getting adequate protein, carbs, and also fueling yourself with fluids. Um, at night, we want to have a decent sleep hygiene. So again, making sure you're getting to bed on time every night, at least setting yourself up, um, reducing some uh, computers or blue screens or any electronics, just so again, you're not stimulated before going to bed. Um, and then the next day, we would like to do at least is 100 points recovery. Ideally, if you're doing a comp or you have a training session that day, we'd like to get that done a little bit on that night and then carry on to the next day. Um, but I'll touch base in the next slide. So pretty much what we've got here is in that very top corner is having at least making sure you're not having two, two to three hours a heavy meal before going to bed. Otherwise that food is just constantly just sitting there. Again, one to two hours before bed, try to start winding down, so reducing all that blue light, start relaxing and also like turning off any stressful things around you. Um, going at least one hour before bed, as mentioned, try reducing any of your electronics. Um, reducing and also getting rid of the dark lights, um, no sorry, having more darkness around you so you're again not too stimulated and your, uh, your body is slowly shutting down ready to relax and de-stress. Room temperature, so making sure you're at least a 18 to 21 degrees so you can actually sleep properly at night without overheating or underheating because you're so cold and hot. Um, and then again setting your mind off, so getting a reminder or just emptying up what journaling before you go to bed so everything's pretty much out of your head onto a piece of paper and you're not constantly thinking every time. Um, and then going straight to bed, so making sure you actually got a decent routine, so just getting to bed and just like shutting all the windows um, and blinds and everything beforehand I just mentioned. So this is pretty much a hundred points of checklist. So it may be a bit hard to read, kind of see on the screen, but we've got 20 points, 15, 10, and five points. So starting at that 20 points, we've got sleep. So getting at least nine hours of sleep. Nutrition as well. So make sure you're consuming fluids. So at least 150% of water um, consumed. And then nutrition again. So making sure you're having enough protein of um, 
ensuring your nutrition is good. So make sure you're having enough proteins, carbs, and fats in your diets. But we touched base that on your session number two. So if you need to look back at that slide or just message me, we can always just touch base further. Yes. <laughs> Um, on 15 points, what we do reckon is having a sleep hygiene. So again, what I just reiterated before, making sure you're having a good routine, setting yourself up for success, journaling or meditation just beforehand, reducing any of your electronics, going to the beach, you got pool, um, going for walks, ice bath and flushing a massage. 10 points, just hanging out, going to the movies, getting some meals, going out, socialising, having a cold shower, meditation and awesome mobility. And five points, so just reading a little bit of TV, cooking, having some video games, just kind of shut off. And then there's just a subjective competition review on yourself. So again, just touching base on some of the mobility and injury prevention starting at session number one we did together. So again, foam rolling pre and post session. Uh, you can pretty much get foam rollers from Kmart, Target, pretty much any sports shops. They do have them. They're super handy to kind of pack away with you. Um, or you can go in the kitchen and just get a rolling pin, pretty much smash it out on your legs. It does exactly the same thing. All it's doing is just getting more blood flow in those particular areas, which is what we do need. Um, ice bath, so again, assisting with soreness. So I like to go hot, cold, just again, so just to flush the blood flow through and any lactate that's building up. Um, Epsom salt, so again, with these, you can pretty much get them at any Coles or Woolies. They do sell them pretty much in the health section, I'm pretty sure. Um, what it does is just kind of relax the muscles, or if you want to chuck some lavender oil in there, that really does kind of just relax you and just wind you down. Um, you can chuck a movie and just kind of chill in the bath. And then fueling adequately, again, just reiterating about making sure you're eating post-training, pre-training and also like also fueling yourself throughout the day. So breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks. Um, lastly, making sure you guys are on top of your e-learning. So next modules coming up is being a late athlete and the NRL compliances. And if you guys got any questions, just flick me a message. Go. Done.